Hi, I'm Brian from iWire, and today we're going to show you how to install our plug and play kit with AEM X Line Series. This is a great wideband because it doesn't require you to run wires from the engine bay to the cabin. It's plug and play. You can use your Cobb access port to data log it, and really awesome for tuners or remote tuning. So, inside the box, you'll get the wideband with our plug and play harness that's going to go to your uh, pre-existing rear O2 connection to the car. You'll get plug cap for the uh, original rear O2 sub harness if you decide to keep it in the car. And the wideband sensor itself. Uh, also, if you have a car that needs, that does not have the spot for it, uh, most aftermarket downpipes do, but if you don't, it also comes with a weld-on bump. The first step is to remove the intercooler and heat shield to expose the downpipe and the rear O2 sensor cap. Next, zip tie the main unit into place. We recommend behind the intercooler on the firewall, but any spot out of the way is fine. Loosen the rear O2 sensor cap to expose the slot and the downpipe. Thread the provided wideband sensor into this open slot. Make sure to tighten it into place so it remains secure. If you don't have the top downpipe slot, like I said, almost every aftermarket Subaru downpipe is going to have that spot. If it doesn't, you would run it down to the slot where your rear O2 sensor used to be and you can plumb it direct in there or have somebody weld on the bung somewhere along the downpipe. Connect the receptacle on the wideband sensor to the matching plug on the main unit. We recommend zip tying it out of the way. Make sure to leave some slack in the sensor wiring so the wire itself is not too tight. <laughs> zip tie any slack wiring coming from the main unit for a tidy install. You can zip tie it to the firewall or tuck it underneath if you prefer to hide the wiring away. Tucked bro! Next, plug in the rear O2 receptacle from the main unit. You'll also install the ground wire during this step. Power, ground, and signal all run through the rear O2 receptacle. Route both wires neatly underneath the existing mechanical mounts. Make sure there is some slack in this wiring. If it's too tight, it might pull out. Unplug the current O2 connector and plug in the receptacle from the main unit. Install the provided plug cap into the loose wiring. This helps prevent corrosion of the harness and also allows you to switch back to the stock system easily. Zip tie the loose wires so they are tucked away neatly. This helps keep the wiring safe as well as making it look nice. We're wiring people, so we care about how the wiring looks. Next, you'll install the ground wire. We recommend utilizing the bolt already in place for the ground strap. Our bolt was dirty, so we went ahead and cleaned it up. A clean ground is a good ground. When putting the bolt back in, you want the original ground strap touching the chassis with the ring terminals from the wideband kit in between the original ring terminal and the bolt head. Once the bolt is tightened, the install of the unit is complete except for getting the correct map on your access port. Couple status lights, green is good, so we're on. So the next step is to update the map on your access port. Uh, contact your local tuner. We contracted uh, our buddy Travis at M45 Snail Performance to give us a new map. So I've already downloaded that on my access port and now we're gonna flash it to the car and then show you how to data log it. So you wanna 
uh, data log it or just function as a gauge. Click on gauges. So in this case, I already have it pulled up, but we can change monitor and it's going to be SNS only rear O2. Or whichever one your tuner or sets it to. Or whichever one your tuner sets it to. And uh, it's, the car's not running, so this is just a raw value. If I started the car, you'd, you'd get an adjustment here.